Hi everybody, this is Christine. Welcome to Scrap and Rabbit. I finished making an extra large journal and when I started making this I thought I would record a process video. Actually it's more than one video. It's uh, I think it's about it's gonna be three videos by the time this is all done and um, I wanted to record all of the steps from start to finish to make this journal. And the reason I did that is that this is using a non-standard size binder and it has uh, five holes punched per page and I don't have the type of hole punch that would do that but I still like using non-standard size binders like this so I figured I would record uh, the little tips and tricks for converting your pages to use into binders like this. This is what I came out with and I just did a, a ribbon tie and I've attached a bunch of dangle charms in there and this is the inside of the binder. So if you want to have a look at the process that I followed to make this, have a look at the videos. I already have a video that shows each of these pages and the sections in detail and I will link to that one as well. So let's get started. I've had this binder sitting around for a while now. I picked this up at a thrift shop and it's a Better Homes and Garden gardening book. It's got a beautiful image on the back. I really like the quality of the binder. It's quite sturdy. It's got a thick cover and it's got the rings inside so I can move the pages around. And I really enjoy working with binders for making junk journals lately. So I thought I would do something with this one. Um, now the thing is, I don't have a punch that will, will punch five holes in each page. And I certainly don't want to punch each hole one at a time. So I figured I have to come up with a way that will allow me to insert the pages. And the easiest way I think to do that would be to simply cut the pages and use the existing holes and then stitch my new papers inside. So I think that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And some of these have very pretty images. For example, this one. So I'm going to leave the entire page in and probably just stick something else on the inside to journal on. I'm not sure what the theme of this journal will be. Um, I think it would be great as a house record book because it's quite thick and I'm going to leave um, quite a few of these tabs in the book. I think I will probably use maybe eight, eight or so of the tabs. I don't think I'd, I'd need all of them. But uh, definitely I'm going to alter these, these dividers so that they can be used. Now to start, I'm going to work on the inside of the book and then I can remove the pages and work on embellishing the cover because as I work in the book I might get some inspiration as to what I would like to have on the cover and the closure and whatnot. So I'm going to start by doing my inside pages and then I'm going to embellish and maybe do some stamping. Now this is a good example of a page, maybe this one, yeah this is a good example of a page that I can use. I'm going to cut here and then I'm going to attach my paper and zigzag to attach it together so you'll see what that looks like. When you're picking out your pages, for example this is a beautiful image that I will likely keep but if I did have an, an image where part of it goes all the way to the left unless that can be used as a border in this case it could be it would just be a nice border on on the page but if you don't want any color from the back of the page then use a page that's that's white on the edge on both sides like that but this would actually make a very pretty border and then I can use this image in another journal but I'm going to start with this one so I'm going to pull this out and use my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut. Now sometimes on the other side the text might start in a bit of a different spot so when you're cutting 
make sure that you're not going to have any text visible on any of the sides or if you do have text visible on this side and not the other you can always stitch your page over the uh, the area so let's just trim this like that so this is um, one of the strips I'm going to use and I'm going to cut a whole bunch of these and then I can stitch you could also glue, but I like stitching because it's not going to make it uh, wobbly when the glue dries. You could also use two-sided tape. So I'm going to stitch along the edge here, and I think for this example, I will use this paper that I have. I cut it. I'm going to cut it so that it's either the same size as a strip, or I can cut the strip to suit the paper. Now this measures nine and a half inches. So if I have eight and a half by 11 paper, I can cut them to, to suit nine and a half inches. Now, since this one is a little bit shorter, I'm just gonna center it between the holes and I'm going to zigzag stitch and I'll be right back. Now, because this is a junk journal, I don't mind having variety on my pages. So I'm using up spools of thread that are nearing their end in some cases. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of variety of different colors on here, but I don't really care because I want to use up my existing supplies as much as possible. So I stitched the paper to my strip. Now when I put this in my, my journal, I can either put it on that side or put it on this side. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to trim off these ends. And I can stick these in my journal like that. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of these insert pages and then I'll be back. So here are the pages that I've inserted. I've got some tea dyed pages in here as well. These are a little bit shorter and then I've got some longer full-size pages. I inserted some envelopes the same way. These were tea stained, so I just stitched along the edge. And then here's another envelope. This one was too long to put lengthwise, so I just folded it over like that and I'm gonna cover it with some paper. And then here's some more paper. And these are some index cards. So I just, again, grabbed some strips and sewed them and then stitched them down the edge. I've got eight in here. Some more paper. And then on this one, I just attached some scrapbook paper. And this paper is acid-free, so you could put uh, put some photos on there. Although this paper on the left is not acid free. So if you're going to be putting some pictures in your journal, it's a good idea to scan them and uh, print them out. Make sure you keep your originals and then you can also crop them to whatever size you want. So I've got that. So next I'm going to make some pages that have the original image on them. And there's an example. I really like this. So I'm going to keep this image, but on the other side, I want to cover that. So I've got this beautiful parchment paper, and this is eight and a half, so it just fits perfectly over the height of the paper. And then I'm going to trim it so that it covers the edge, but not the hole. And I'm going to ink around the edges on this one. And I think instead of stitching, because I don't want my stitching to show on the back, I'm just going to go ahead and glue that on. So if I measure this, I can go eight and a half. Oh, this is perfect. 
eight and a half by five inches so I could cut two two sheets from here may as well just go ahead and cut this one so I can use this on two pages one aside I want the paper that's going to be dark enough to cover the wording I'm just using tacky glue. When I'm gluing my papers, the idea is you want to glue around the edges. Don't glue in the middle because that will really make your paper warp. And I don't need a whole lot of glue either because this tacky glue sticks really well. use my finger to spread this out along the edges. that dry. So now I've got a page with a beautiful image and I can journal on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and find some more images that I'd like to keep and insert them in my binder. So here are my pages glued in. And I can also stamp on that. Maybe I'll do a bit of stamping later. And when I glue my parchment paper, it has a bit of a tendency to crinkle on the edges, and I really don't mind that. It gives a nice sort of aged look to the paper. On this one, you can see the exposed printing on the page. But that's fine, I could just leave it like that, but I'll probably also just end up putting um, some embellishment on top there or a pocket or something like that. So now I'm ready to make my, my dividers. And I think what I'm gonna do is, is go back to my, my book where I had these images. I used some to make a smaller binder journal and I really like the pictures and the book has these larger images that would fit perfectly in here. So I think I'm going to take one of these images and put them on each of the um, on each of the dividers on the front. I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the back yet but I'm going to go ahead and prepare my images. I already cut this to size and I inked around the edge. Now, I want to, um, to get some new tabs on here. These have writing on them. What I could do is just stick a little piece of paper over top like that, and then the bottom would be covered by my, by my paper, and then I could write a new, uh, a new title here. But I think what I'm going to do is, because I have plenty of room on here, I'm just going to take off a little strip of the cardstock and remove the tab completely. And that way I can put whatever 
tabs I want on there. So I'm going to take off like one sixteenth of an inch like that and now I can use this for for whatever tabs I want and then that's going to go like that. So I'm going to use my punch. I have some, um, some tab dies but I think I'm just going to use my punch for this project. I get a piece of cardstock and I'll show you how I how I make my tabs. So I'm going to punch this design and then I put this on my trimmer and I can just cut it in two. Now I could use these as tabs as they are like that, which is kind of nice and ornate. The other thing I can do is um, alter the design. So if I wanted to remove this little squiggly part up here, I can just position that on here and cut wherever I want to make a new tab. It would have been easier if I had done this before cutting it in two. But So there we go. So now I have a different shape for my tab. that I can use. I think I like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Now I can also attach it underneath or like that. And I think I'm going to attach it underneath and I will be covering this up with some sort of paper anyway so it will cover the, uh, the base of the tab. Now I've got eight sections so I'm going to cut out eight of these tabs and then I'll show you how I use my scoreboard to space these out evenly. Here are my eight tabs. I inked around the edges on both sides and I put a piece of two-sided tape along the bottom. So I'm going to take my scoreboard and I've got eight dividers so I'm going to have um, four tabs going down so two sets of four tabs. I'm going to take the first four pages or the first four dividers and I'm going to place them on my scoreboard. Now I'm going to start with just the first, the first two. I've got my tabs. I'm going to take two of them and I'm going to start by attaching the top and the bottom because those are the easiest to do. I put them flush against my scoreboard with the tape side up. Then I can take my first divider and I'm going to place it at the half inch mark. Now by placing all of my dividers at the half inch mark and the tops of my tabs flush against the edge, I know that when I attach these, they're always going to be straight and even on each one. So I'm going to remove, well first before I do that, I need to decide where I want my tabs to go. So I'm going to inset these a little bit. I've got two lines here, so that's about two eighths of an inch on the left and the right. One, two, so it's going to be like that. Okay, so I'm going to remove my tape backing and reposition this like that. And then with my divider flush against the left side, I can move it up to the half inch mark and just press down and my tab is attached. Then I can leave this on my board like that. I place my next tab, oops I'm going to remove my two-sided tape 
my backing the table and then I want this to be the same distance from this edge so that's two of those little lines that's two eighths of an inch from the edge and that's nice and flush against the top I'm going to line this up at the half inch mark on the left and just lower that like that. Okay, so I've got my two tabs set up. Next, I want to do my two middle tabs. So I'm going to take two more of these and this is where I'm going to line them up and I can use these two tabs as a starting point and I want to distribute these so that they're even. So I've got two lines here and it just works out perfectly. Two lines in between here and two lines there. I can just tweak it a little bit. One, two, one, two. Yeah, so this is pretty good like that. So now I can see how my, uh, my tabs can be evenly distributed. So I'm going to start with this one. So this is at the three and a half inch mark. So I'll just remove my tape backing and reposition this here. Let's line this up with the others and just press down. And then the last one goes right here. So it's easier than just eyeballing it and you know that your your tabs will be straight. Line that up. Okay. So there's my first four dividers. I'm going to do the same thing to the other dividers and I'm going to choose my images. I inked around the edges here as well and then I'm going to attach my images. I'm just going to glue them on. I would have liked to stitch them on but I'm going to glue them because this cardstock is quite thick and it's going to wear my needle down. Here are my finished dividers. Well, that is the front part of the dividers is done. And these are the images that I selected. My dividers are quite thick so they're nice and sturdy. I'm going to take advantage of that and attach some envelopes and some pockets and even some paper bags on here. And I'm going to start with my paper bags. I've got a stack that I bought at a grocery store and you'll notice that the bottom isn't quite perfect but I have an easy way to solve that problem. So I'm going to measure the height that I want for my bag I don't want it to go all the way to the top because I want some of my items maybe to stick out. So I'm going to cut it down so that it measures about maybe about eight inches or so. I'll go maybe I'll go about eight and a half and see how that looks. Yeah that's not a bad size. 
Okay, now because my tab is up high, I want to cover the base of my tab. I would have to put my envelope or my paper bag all the way up there. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to choose another page here, another divider, and this will cover just fine. I'm going to cut this, punch this semicircle out here. And now I'm going to ink all around the bag. what I'm going to do up there just yet, but I'm going to attach this image here. Now I want to cover up this area here that's uneven and also I want to use this as a pocket. If I was to glue these two sides down it would limit the amount of space that I have to tuck items in. So instead of gluing here I'm just going to wrap some paper around the edges so then I'll have the full width of the paper bag to insert items. So I've got this greenish parchment paper and I'm just going to line this up with the top edge like that. And I'm going to measure where to cut. I'm going to leave about half an inch on each side. Then I'm going to cut the bottom so that it too just lines up just above the bottom. I'm going to ink the bottom edge. crooked here. Straighten this out. Okay, so that's going to go like that. And I can just wrap my, my edges over. I'm going to glue this down first. I might have put a bit too much glue on there. But it's it's going to dry clear anyways. Like that. And then I can glue the backs. 
that's going to cover that excess edge. to attach my image. There's my pocket, and I think I'll ink a little bit more. going to attach my my bag and I'm going to have it centered top to bottom or I can just have it closer to the bottom edge I think yeah I'm going to do that Now again, these bags are not acid free, so if you're going to tuck some photos in, make sure you've got the originals in a safe place because you don't want this to get, your images to get um, damaged by acid in the paper over time. Or you could just use acid free bags. These are inexpensive lunch bags and I kind of like the texture of this type of paper. Now I can add um, some design paper here if I like, but I think I might just leave it plain for now. I might decide later to do something. But now you can see that 
I've got the entire space of the bag that I can use to to insert some items in. So I think next I'm going to be working on attaching some pockets to this divider. 